Welcome back, and we are nearly done with the Tetris game. The next major bit that we are going to work on will be the score. I want to display three major bits via text. Number one, the score we get for every line cleared. Number two, the total amount of lines we have cleared. And number three, the level we are on, which would determine the speed we have for the game. We already have all of the basics, so let's jump right in. Once again, we are back in main.py, although for this one, I want to close preview, because we don't need that one anymore. With that, I can focus on score.py. Since for this one, we want to use some text, we have to create a font. This is quite easily done, and also something that I want to store inside of a font attribute. To create a font in Pygame, you need pygame.font.font. In there, you need two arguments. Number one is the font, and number two is the font size. The font size is just going to be an integer. In our case, I will go with 30. For the font, we will need to import a file. If I open again the folder, there we have Russell one This is the file we want to import. And if you double click on that one, it gives you a kind of font. So this is a certain font style. To import that one, I want to use the same thing I have used for the graphics. I want from OS import path. Or to be a touch more elegant from this one, we can from os.path import join. That way, inside of this font object, we can simply join a couple of strings together. The first one is going to be one folder up. Then for the next one, we want to go to the graphics folder. And finally, we have a file called Russo underscore one dot ttf. Make sure for this one that the R and the O are capitalized. Otherwise, this is going to get an error. If you want to test all of this, run main.py. If you don't get an error, the import should have worked just fine. Perfect. With that, we have the font. Next up then, we want to start displaying the text. And for that, we will need a position. For the text, I'm going to do the same thing I have done for the preview graphics which means if this entire thing is the surface, let me draw a larger arrow, this is going to be the surface, and I want to split this into three separate bits, which means each of those is going to be one increment. That operation we have already seen, so let's do it all the way at the bottom. I want to create an increment once again. Let's call this self.increment height, and this is just going to be self dot surface and then get underscore height. This I want to divide by three. After we have that, before we are displaying the surface, I want to do a couple of things. Number one, I want to fill the entire surface with a gray color. So self.surface.fill with a gray color. After that, I want to do a for loop for i and text in, let's for now create a basic list. I want to display a score, I want to display a level, and I want to display the amount of lines that we have cleared. Also, all of this, since we want to get the index, needs to be wrapped in the enumerate function. Once we have that, we can get an x variable and we can get a y variable. x will be the easier one. I want to get the surface and this should be self.surface. I want to get the width of that and then divide it by two. Why we have also seen, I want to get self dot increment height divided by two, and then plus i multiplied self dot increment height. Once again, to explain this second bit, this first part self dot increment divided by two is going to be the vertical center of the first increment. And after that, we keep on increasing by the full amount of the increment. That way for every successive piece, we are always landing on the center. With that, we have X and Y covered. That information I now want to display. And for that, I will create a separate method. This I called self.displayText. In there, we need a position and the text. The text we are getting from the for loop and just paste it in there. So this part is already covered. And then the position is just going to be X and Y. So this is also very easily added. All I have to change then is the position should be a tuple with X and Y. After that, I want to create another method that I'm going to call display text. 
for that we need self, the position, and a piece of text we want to display. To display text inside of Pygame, we need to go through a couple of steps. Number one, we have to use the font to create a surface. This surface I want to store in a separate variable, text surface. And basically what I want to do is I want to get self.font, the one we created earlier, and then use the render method. This render method wants to have three arguments. Number one is the piece of text you want to render. Then it wants to know if you want to enter alias the text, and then it wants to know the color. The text is going to be really easy because we already get a text from the parameters. I guess I should explain inside of this for loop. We are picking via this text either the score, the level, or the lines. And that we are passing into display text. That way we can use all of that inside of the method and then this text we are passing into this text for the render. That way we get either score, level or lines. Enter alias would smooth the text out. This you generally want to enable unless you have a font where you want to have really sharp edges. In my case though I don't have that. Finally for the color we can simply use a pure white color. With that we have a surface and then this surface we want to place. And the best way to play something in Pygame is by creating a rectangle. Which means I want to get the text surface, then get underscore rect, and I want to place this center. Which is just going to be the position. That is the position we are getting from the parameters, so we can just pass it through. Finally, all we have to do is get self.surface and then blit all of that. So I want to blit the text surface and the text rectangle. And with that, we should have some basic text. Let's try main.py, and there we can see score, level, and lines. That's a good start. Although I forgot that we also have to create the frame around this box. That we have done a couple of times by now. We could actually copy this from the game itself all the way at the bottom. There's quite a bit of code by now. I want to draw the rectangle. So I can copy this line, paste it in there, and now we should have a frame. That looks much better. Cool, so with that, we have the basic setup. Now we have to figure out how to actually display current information. So I don't just want to display a piece of text, I want to update this. And for that, we have to actually get a score, a level, and the lines. All of that is going to happen inside of the game. And let me minimize the methods so it's a bit easier to read. First of all, inside of the init method, I want to add another section for the score. There are three attributes that I want to create. Self.currentLevel, which is getting a default value of one. Then self.currentScore, that one is going to be zero. And then self.currentLines, which will also be zero. The level is going to be the level we are on. Score is the amount of points the player has achieved. And the lines are the amount of lines we have cleared. What we now have to figure out is how to update these numbers. All of that logic is going to happen inside of a separate method. I call this one calculate score. This one needs self and then the number of lines that we have cleared. For now in there, I simply want to print the number of lines. Question now is how can we get this number? And there already is a place where we have access to that number. This we are getting inside of check finished rows. Because in there, we are getting the amount of lines that we are clearing when we are finishing a row. If we, for example, have three lines that we want to clear, the delete rows list would have a length of three. Which means at the end of check finished rows, we can add self.calculate score. And all I want to know is the length of delete rows. I should probably add a comment there, update score. Let's try all of this and I want to play for a second. So let me speed up all of this. And once again, please don't judge my Tetris skills. All right, there we have one piece and we should be seeing two. And indeed we do. So this is working perfectly fine. Which means next up, we can actually use the number of lines to calculate the score. The easiest one is going to be the amount of lines we have cleared in total. 
This is super easily calculated self dot current lines plus equal the number of lines. Next up, I want to calculate the current score. And the way that is going to work, inside of settings, we have score data. If we are clearing one line, the player should get 40 points. If two lines are cleared, then there should be 100 points and so on. This score data we can then use to update self.current score, dot lines score. I simply want to add the score data and then get the number of lines. Also, all of that, I want to multiply with self.current level. And I guess, let me explain what numbers we are getting here. For example, if number of lines is two and the level is one, we would get two lines, which I believe would be a hundred points. And then if current level is one, the total amount of score that we are getting would be 100. However, if the current level would be something like four, then we would multiply all of this with four and the result would be 400. That way, a higher level would give more points, which is how Tetris also works. All right, for the final bit, we have to figure out the current score. How that one is going to work is every 10 lines, we are increasing the level by one. I hope that line makes sense, but basically, if we get 10 lines, the level should be two. If we get 20 lines, the level should be three, and so on. There are a couple of ways to implement this. I think an easy one would be self.current lines divided by 10. And if that number is greater than self.current level, then we want to increase the level by one. So self.current level plus equal one. And with that, we have all of the information that we want to display. We have the lines, the score, and the level. But now we have an issue. All of that information is contained inside of the game class, but we need to put all of that into the score, which means inside of main.py, we have to connect the game to the score. And that we are going to do via another method inside of main.py. I'm going to call this update score. And this one needs to have three parameters besides self. We want the lines, the score, and the level. Figuring this method out is going to be your exercise. Display the score from the game inside of the score class. Pause the video now and try to figure this one out. First of all, we have to figure out when to call this update score. This needs to happen inside of the game, which means when we are creating it, it will also need self.update score. And for now, so we're not getting an error, I'm going to add pass in there. And next up, inside of the game, besides get next shape, we would also need update score. This update score needs to be saved inside of an attribute, so self.update score is going to be update score. And then inside of calculate score, all the way at the end, I want to call self.update score and pass in the three parameters or arguments for these parameters. Lines are going to be self.current lines, score is going to be self.current score, and level is going to be self.current level. With that, we are done inside of game.py. Next up, we have to figure out how to update the information inside of the score class. You might be tempted to add self.update score as an argument into the actual class, but you don't have to do that. A much easier way would be to get self.score. And in there, we could create a few more attributes. One could be, for example, lines, and this one is getting the lines. Then self.score.score would be the score. Finally, self.score.level would be the level. Remember, you can always update the attributes of a class perfectly fine. The only reason we are entering these methods into the game class is because we don't have easy access to the main class. But the score we can super easily reach from the main class. Which means, inside of score.py, I want to create a few more attributes. Let's call this one data. There should be self.score, which is zero, then self.level, which is going to be one, and finally self.lines will be zero. 
and these three attributes will be updated inside of main.py via this method. All we have to figure out now is how to display these numbers. And for that, I'm going to use the for loop again. Right now, we are only displaying static text, but what we can do is change this text to a tuple. And then besides the text, we can also add self.score, for example, for the actual score. The same I want to do for the level. So besides the level string, I also want to have self.level. And then finally for the lines, besides the string, I also want to have self.lines. With that, the text is going to be a tuple, so we couldn't use it like this anymore. However, what we can do is turn all of that into an F string. And there, the first piece of text is going to be text. And since this is a tuple, we can use indexing with the first element, which would be score, level, or lines. After that, we can use a colon and then insert the second piece of information, which would be text and one. Let's try all of this now. And this is looking pretty good. And at the end, we are getting an error. And the error here is quite easy to read. When we're updating the current score, we are trying to get a data from the dictionary and then multiply it with the current level. The error we are getting is key error being zero, which basically means that inside of this dictionary, this one, the keys we have are one, two, three, and four. And for some reason, we entered a zero in there. And I have a good idea of where this is coming from. I already have it open. When we are checking the finished row, we are always running self.calculate score. But this we don't actually want to do. Instead, I want to indent all of this once. That way we are only running all of this if we have deleted rows. And if there are deleted rows, then the length of deleted rows is at least one and at the most four. That way we are never getting the key error where we have zero rows. And now let's try all of this again. And I think I have to speed up all of this so we can actually test this. All right, there we can clear one line and we should get 40 points. And we do, we also cleared one line that is looking really good. And let me try to clear two lines at once and let's hope I don't fail. All right, there we can actually clear three lines at once and I believe that would, ah, it's two lines, so we should get 100 points. And we do, we also increased the score, so this is looking pretty good. So with that, we are displaying the score, the level and the lines. 